This episode is brought to you by Quranly. Quranly is a Quran app with a twist. Unlike conventional Quran apps, Quranly brings a habit-centered approach. The app is designed to help you build the habit of reading Quran. This is made possible by elements such as the progress tracker. I have a fly with me in the studio. Progress tracker, daily rewards, and one of my favorite features, the Hasanat calculator. So this Hasanat calculator is built on the hadith that says that you get 10 rewards for every letter of the Quran that you read. And so in the app, you see the amount of Hasanat that you and or reward that you're getting. Uh, for everything that you've read It's amazing But the even cooler feature about it Is if you recommend the app to a friend So let's say for example I recommend the app to my friend Nate uh, And Nate starts reading Quran uh, His Hasnat gets added to his Hasnat tracker But it also gets added to my Hasnat tracker So if I send the app to like 10 people I'm getting reward as I would for like, for example, buying the Quran for them. It's amazing. Quran is on schedule to be released in time for Ramadan and you can sign up now for the release and also get a discounted price by going to quranly.app. By signing up now, you'll also be helping in getting the app off the ground and so hopefully getting a share of the reward for everybody who downloads the app in the future. Head over to quranly.app now. That's Quranly. Dot app. Yusuf Ali is a professional chef who runs a popular freshly grounded show Made Halal and with Ramadan now less than 10 days away we've got him on the podcast to talk about prepping, making and shopping for food as well as preparing for the month. Welcome to episode 224 of Freshly Grounded. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Yusuf. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. How's it going? Alhamdulillah, it's going very well, man. I haven't seen you in a, quite some time, and it's quite sad actually because we built mm. a, a very, um, uh, a very a speedy friendship uh, because we had to see each other for such a long. We had to see each other for a long period of time in such a short period of time over a lengthy period of time. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's, it's, it's been yeah, it's been an emotional roller coaster. Being told that I can't travel down to London to spend the more of those studio sessions together but yeah it was it was it was really fun so hopefully uh well this is the closest we've been in, in months to doing something freshly grounded related yeah man i um it was so fun because we would every two weeks for those of um those listening um we would do we'd film every two weeks we'd film about two or three recipes at a time for Made Halal, which was a show, uh, is a show on Freshly Grounded. Inshallah, will continue to be a show uh, of Freshly Grounded. This is my way of finding out you cancelled it. <laughs> yeah, it was a show. Yeah, the whole week. Was was I'm the yeah. <laughs> Imagine that's how we fit it. That's how we like call an end to it. <laughs> Um, this isn't so, even a going uh, on fresh ground. This is just a way of telling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. <laughs> um, no, all right, freshly. Let's let's start again. So, uh, Made Halal is a show. It is a show. Mm. Uh, do you know we've actually got an episode of Made Halal in the bank? Do you know that? Yeah, I, I do know. The I do cheesecake know. one, I believe. Cheesecake one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to. Re- <laughs> <laughs> need to release that. Um, okay, so it would be weird now to like after weeks and weeks and weeks come back with a cheesecake. Yeah, it's a random, random video. Yeah, 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 for loads of weeks. But um, so those of you who are listening who don't know, Made Halal is a show uh, on Freshly Grounded and was really like one of the first, if not the first show that we released on Freshly Grounded when we decided to make a, a change to expand out um, farther than or further than the podcast um and it's just been amazing working with you uh yusuf on that and essentially the idea of the show was to find foods um from around the world that generally are not halal and then make them halal or um just making food <laughs> so there's like a mix of the two <laughs> um yeah and uh, it was really fun and i'm uh, like it, it, we started it um in the period of time when uh, covid restrictions had 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 um allowed for us to make yeah, this happen uh, and then we, 
Yeah, and then the, and then the COVID is the, then COVID kind of rules got a bit stricter, and we were still allowed to do it because filming and work uh, fell into it. But um, we but then it got quite tough uh, again due to the COVID restrictions. So um, it's it's um, sadly come to a bit of a pause. But I'm really really excited uh, to make that happen again. And not only am I excited to make that happen again, but I'm also really excited to to make it happen on on a on a better level. Hopefully, like mm. we've got all of these plans in mind that we haven't even spoken about really properly together which i'm excited to speak to you about but hopefully we can um always always look at, uh, at improving that how do you no, feel absolutely. not not being around um no it's, it's 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 definitely been quite like uh it was it was a good momentum that we had uh going i think a lot of people quite yeah. liked that we, we it's what, what you were talking about as well is that it was building momentum we were looking at like really going off and doing more interesting things things that hadn't Forget the Muslim community, but like just generally food people yeah, forget would them. like, do you know what I mean? So we, we, we were really like looking to, I wouldn't say that like it's lost momentum, but we definitely just had a long pause. But I think when we come back, we're just going to really appreciate the time we have to kind of make these things because even though we're so close to each other, we can't do any of it, which is a shame. But, you know, inshallah that's, soon. That's true. Yeah, and I, I, I'm i looking forward to, to working with you again. And, um, and uh, this is the first time... Uh, in fact, we actually had like some plans for Ramadan, remember? And it just, sadly, mm. we haven't been able to like make it happen in, in, in such a short period of time without seeing each other. But Alhamdulillah, you know, as is the Qadr of Allah and we put our trust in it. Um, let's talk about uh, Ramadan. Let's talk about Ramadan because I know we were going to, we were planning some stuff for, and you know what, this this Ramadan year would have been the best year in theory. Like you would have thought, Alhamdulillah, like we said, Allah had other plans. But this mm. is the first year in a few years that Omar hasn't done guilty chef either. So like yeah. it would be like there'll be like no conflict of um, conflict of interest for us to like release something similar. But yeah, Alhamdulillah, yeah. I know you're um, working on a book uh, for Ramadan, which we'll discuss a bit later on. But um, mm. I, I want to talk to you about um, uh, we're, we're two weeks away now. Ten days, I think, as of today, ten nine or ten days oh, away yeah, from yeah. from Ramadan, and so inevitably people are going to be doing their Ramadan shopping, and that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to speak to you about. You know, you're for those who don't know, a qualified chef, um, and you've got experience working in a five star hotel and uh, uh, in the in the restaurant department. <laughs> Imagine if I was like, you're you're a qualified chef, you have uh, experiences in a hotel as a. Uh, <laughs> A pool cleaner <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, in, yeah. in, the, in the restaurant. I was a doorman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, not, the, not as anything as, wrong with that, but yeah. No, but the point yeah. is, is that it was all food related, yeah. right? That's why I'm, I'm saying it. Yeah. And uh, and you have a real passion for uh, people understanding the history of food, um, and especially mm. the history of food from from the from its Islamic background. So, food of Palestine, food of um, Syria, uh, food of uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, and so on and so forth. And so, being someone who understands food and its origins and in, in, from a health perspective like what goes into our food uh, and also understands like the culture uh, islamically or the very or the varying cultures that um that you know are, are muslims are um a, a key part of i thought it'd be cool to have you on and discuss kind of foods what people should buy uh, now that they're mm -hmm. planning to do ramadan shopping how people should prepare their meals for ramadan what's a good sahur what's a good iftar um that i thought that'd be a great conversation so um yeah let absolutely. me hand let me just hand the mic over to you and you start where you where you want to because uh, we said it was unscripted but what, what, what do you think people should be thinking about right now they're two weeks away from ramadan they're about to do their shopping what's going in the basket it's it's interesting because every year we make the plan to kind of lose weight in Ramadan. We all, I'm going to lose weight, or should I say manage weight? Because losing weight is too one-sided. We always try and manage our weight in in, in Ramadan, and, and every time it comes, we somehow put on more weight. Or it gets like it gets really weird because you know we I, I, I think we need to understand the kind of how to structure our food and stuff like that because. You can't just, you know, we don't eat all day, but then when it comes to that short window that you can eat, people eat so much that it's more than you would have eaten in a regular day. And and it doesn't really work like that. And one thing to bear in mind is that through lockdown, our calorie intake has been the same, uh, but we're not really expending as much because we've been at home. And that's why a lot of us, you know, have found that, you know, they've, they've called it lockdown weight and stuff like that. So we've, we've put on that. So really it's just about understanding how we can balance it. And, you know, across the, across the, day of, of fasting and stuff like that it's just about finding that balance which will stop us from going even worse into a more unhealthy kind of routine and stuff like that so i mean let's start let's start with sahur so like i think the most important thing for me i only eat one thing and and i'm a i'm a 
a very I like variety. I don't like to eat the same thing all the time. But for sahur, I eat one thing, one thing every single day, and that's porridge. I will make porridge every oh, single really? day. Yeah, 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 just like whole oats with water and a splash of milk. Um, cook slowly, uh, honey and um, some berries, and that's all I'll eat every single day. Thirty days Ramadan, and I've alhamdulillah, I don't ever feel that kind of the the anger, should I say, that you get when you is, feel is hungry. Because... You'll get to feel... Sorry, is that because it's like a slow, uh, you, it's slow releasing carbs? So, like, is that the reason you do it, or just because you like porridge? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm, I'm not a massive. I don't really eat porridge like the rest of the year. To be honest, I'm bad with breakfast. Generally, I don't really eat breakfast, and you know, I only eat cereal at night and stuff like that. So, I'm not, I'm not an advocate for like healthy eating at all. But when it comes to Ramadan, like things that have slow releases is, is the best thing. And if you don't like porridge, you can work it in different ways. If I don't have time to cook a porridge, uh, if I've only got a few minutes left for the other, end, I'll just slap a um, bunch of oats in a blender with some dates, uh, peanut butter, uh, oat milk, and some honey, and just blend it and drink it. Um, you just need to get that good kind of slow releasing uh, carbohydrates in, into your body. That's, that's, it's incredibly important. Um, and you know, it, yeah, it definitely will stop you from feeling that kind of hunger. Uh, the issue is that when we have things like uh, I, I won't. I won't name names. One of my siblings in my household loves Nutella pranta, like pr uh, frozen pranta as well. Even oh, though I can make fresh pranta, no, 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 it has to be frozen pranta, um, uh, and then you know, cooked in, in butter, and then Nutella and squirted cream on top. Um, no, which you know that part in itself. That part in itself is da so damaging. I yeah, have, it's heavy. I, yeah, me and Sam have spoken about that brother loads of times on Freshly Grounded, mm -hmm. right? And we're speaking about how bad it is for you. And yeah, um, yeah. And it, like, because I looked at the macros in it once. And so I, for about nine, ten months now, haven't mm -hmm. had a prata. And I used to have about two or three a day, bro. And when I looked at the macros, it's like, I can't remember, by the way, I think it was like 400 calories per or like 300 per parata or something. And you could you could easily have two with a meal because it's so small. And if you have that twice a day, you're having four and, and oh, it's really bad for you, man. So I've, I've stopped those, but they are so tasty. But that alongside Nutella and then Squirty Cream. Yeah, yeah. It's a recipe it's, for disaster. It's more than that. It's, it's going to give you a big burst of energy and then you're just going to, boom, you're going to mm. slam it. You're just going to go straight. And it's actually, it's interesting in the gap that we've, because I've, being so lonely without freshly grounded in my life the past few months, I actually have uh, done a, a level three in nutrition and weight management. So I just wanted to know a bit more about it as well. So it's been fascinating to kind of understand the way like our body works and stuff like that. And, and when it comes to the things you eat, we eat the worst things in Sahur uh, at Sahur time. And then by midday, you're already gone because like all your food is just, you know, the quickest uh, energy release. And like, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's really not good at all. Um, even things like cereal. Cereal has so much sugar in it. And, and I'm not saying like, of course, you can have sweet things, but try and have it in the natural sense, you know, and, and that, that's that's the best thing, uh, best advice I would ever give. It's just, you know, just Google search, use the NHS website. It's like one of the best tools that no one ever uses. Use the NHS website. It has a catalog of like so many different, you know, foods and its nutritional benefits and stuff. And just look for foods that have slow releases. Oats is my, oats are my favorite thing. I literally never have them the rest of the year. Uh, uh, only, only at uh, you know, Sahur time in Ramadan, and a lot of people will have like halwa puri chana and stuff like that for um, for Sahur, you know, like that kind of like really heavy. Or they'll have like salan or like leftover biryani and stuff like that, and just kind of like just eat whatever and then go to sleep and, and whatever. And you have to understand that like you're eating, you're not giving yourself the time to digest, you're going to sleep straight away. It's not doing wonders for yourself, and that's why we always wonder how do we put on weight in Ramadan when we're eating less? It's because our timings of the timing that you eat. And what you eat before you sleep and stuff like that, it all adds up to it, you know. Um, so I think that's really incredibly important. I think moving on to iftar, I think it's important that we understand that as we fast, our stomach is shrinking. So to cram loads of food in straight away, that's why you feel full really quickly. You know, start off like I would personally, when we eat iftar, like we go for small portions. We're going to talk about it later when, when it comes to the book. But what we try to do is structure it in a way where it's like, foods that will be good to open with so you want something light and small to start with to expand your stomach a little bit and then eat in small amounts rather than having one big spread everyone just eats all in one and then that's it finish no take it in, in periods your stomach needs to expand it needs to kind of get used to it and stuff like that so 
Yeah, it's, it's nutritionally, it, it can be a weird time Ramadan because if you're just cramming your food into two set slots, it's not going to do wonders for you. You need to pace yourself. You need to uh, put the right things inside you as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Are you, are, you a, are you a frozen person? Do you get all the freezer stock up stuff when it comes to Ramadan or, or are you a fresh? I was actually going to speak to you about this because I know you're quite yeah, yeah. Um, strong on not doing the whole deep fried spring rolls and deep fried samosas and stuff. And that's going to be in general, genuine, gen, generally, yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> gen, that's going to be a general food item for mm. most households, especially Asian households, is um, shopping basket. Um but you're really like anti the the deep fried iftars like the samosas and the, and the spring rolls. Do your best at convincing uh, us all to stay away from that in our shop. Because I'm not um, gonna lie, bro. It's, it's hard to avoid. It's hard to avoid picking that up in the freezer. It's Ramadan. It gives you the feel. No, it really is. Ramadan, but... um, I mean, there's a there's a few things. To be honest, like, firstly, it's hard to go. Uh, from one extreme to the other, like straight away, like for example, like veganism or veg uh, uh, let's say vegetarianism, like I really support the principles of not eating dairy pro uh, meat products and stuff like that. Uh, I try and avoid dairy where I can because like it's not good for me anyway. But things like meat, the only reason I have that I consume meat as much as I do is because I like it. So they, it really is difficult to just say, you can see the benefit of not eating a samosa and deep fried you know, bits and bobs and, and all the frozen kebabs and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, we're still going to eat it because that's that's what we like. And I think the best thing to do is just cut down. If you usually eat that kind of stuff five days a week, try four days a week in Ramadan. Do you know what I mean? Just pace, just, just cut down even a little bit because the one of the biggest principles of nutrition, people try all sorts of diets and all kinds of nonsense and everything, you know, a new thing pops up every single day. At the end of the day, it's all about being balanced. And, and this is what Islam kind of teaches in terms of like uh, being moderate in everything that you do. You know, you can't just be extreme. You can't just say, right, I'm going to go on this. Like people are going on keto diets and stuff like that. If you ever try and hand me a lettuce sandwich, I'm just going to give it back to you because there's no way that like, you know, we can't we can't live like this. So at the end of the day, it, even when it comes to people going on calorie deficits or trying to lose weight, it's always, always recommended to do it in very small amounts, you know. Don't go the whole way. Don't starve yourself. Don't get rid of all the fried foods and frozen stuff from your freezer. Maybe it's using an air fryer, for example, you know, to cut back the amount of oil that goes into it. Do you know what I mean? Like there's lots of little things that we can do to not change. We're not going to be perfect, but to change your current diet and make it a little bit better. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's just, oh, I'm going to have some fresh fruit with it, Ramadan, whereas normally the fruit I have is in the form of jelly or something like that. Do you know what I mean? You might just, just make slight changes. It's never about... Uh, because I, I often find that the, the Ramadans that we've had where we've been like, we're going to go super healthy this Ramadan are the ones that just don't work because you can't just go extreme, you know? So what I tend to do in Ramadan, we'll, we'll balance it. So last year we did this as well, where some days, uh, my siblings will love the frozen stuff. So some days, maybe two or three times a week, we'll do the frozen stuff. Uh, and then the rest of the days, we'll do some fresh stuff. We'll do some like fresh hummus maybe and, and fresh baked bread for, for to break it rather than that which will be a bit better. And then, you know, maybe having a salad and, uh, you know, we've done like little, uh, little bowls of like watermelon and feta and mint, for example, uh, you know, just changing it up. And, and I, I think that's the main thing, you know, it's not about going completely cold turkey. It's, it's about like making small changes, which you'll see in the long term, you know? My mother-in-law makes the most amazing spring rolls, bro, like homemade spring rolls. And I remember last year I did, I did the technique that you just mentioned, which is, to yeah. not be, ex be not be extreme with with changes, right? Because mm -hmm. you end up failing. Um, <clears throat> and so I set myself a rule. And what I would do, I wouldn't have spring rolls every day. First of all, so that was a great mm -hmm. um, kind of step in the right direction. But also, I when I did want one, I would allow myself, but I would fry one spring roll, and it's very inefficient to put the mm -hmm. fryer on and deep fry one spring roll. It's one not the best. Roll like efficiency wise but i it was what i had to do to make make it make it happen because i fancied one that my balance between making sure i 
um can 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 have one if i fancy one but not have yeah. five was to just literally take one out of the freezer and fry one with my meal um and so that helped so i think yeah. I, I think you're right but with anything it's like the slower you do things uh, or like you ease yourself into it it always works a lot better um I, let, a bit, let's talk a bit about your about like food preparation because mm -hmm. Ultimately, like what we're trying to get to with this podcast is really cooking the food. You know, as a chef, it would be silly of us. As much as like I'm sure uh, you're you're very knowledgeable with nutrition and 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 all that kind of stuff, which you have to be in your field. Um, mm -hmm. You're a class at, at preparing and cooking food. That's that's what you do. So, um, what kind of how how do you guys? So in your household, I know in your household you're the you're the guy in the kitchen, right? Like no one else is allowed to cook. How 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 does it work? How when do you start preparing your food? What kind of food do you prepare? Um, I like I know you said you you like to cook most of your stuff fresh. Um, what's it like in Ramadan? And and what tips could you give to the people who who are also the the men or the women of the kitchen who like to take control? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's tricky because, you know, with work and stuff like that, it can be quite difficult. And, you know, you come back and you don't want to necessarily do that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of, like, prep that can be done. For example, uh, one of my biggest, like, um, print, not principles, but, like, one thing which I we, we, we like to do, we, we like to give um, food out to, to people in Ramadan, obviously, which we'll, we can talk about later and stuff like that, about the act of giving and stuff like that. But I really think that bread is the best way to break fast. Like I love bread. I think there's nothing better than like coming to a table and like smelling fresh baked bread. So I, I love making things like focaccia and, and stuff like that, like, an, you know, Italian bread and things like that and just dipping it in oil and, and, you know, a light way of starting it. But personally, I love, I love bread. So what I'll do rather than being the person that says, you know, like, Oh, I make fresh bread every Ramadan, every, every iftar. It sounds very like, you know, what I'll do is just make like enough. Um, and when you put bread in the fridge, like raw, like, you know, uncooked bread, um, it will slow down the proving time. So you can actually prove bread in the fridge, like with the yeast and stuff like that. So there'll be little things I'll do where I like need all the bread. And then you might just like section it in the fridge and stuff like that and just keep it. And it will, it will be okay for the next day when you want to like, you know, bake it. Um, there'll be, it's so funny because we, we were just the first mm. the first chunk of the podcast we were speaking about health and nutrition and then as soon as we started talking about how to actually prepare we went straight into dipping bread into oil <laughs> yeah but it's honest Let's like it's not, serious, the, it's, not the wor it's not the worst thing for you like if you yeah, use wholemeal right. flour and like extra virgin olive oil and stuff like that it's not it's not awful for you uh, uh, do as, you ever um, not make I, bread fresh I'd, mm, unless we have yeah, actually if we, we there's a good like there's a really nice kurdish bakery um like five minutes from my house so if if i don't make fresh bread i'll I'll buy fresh bread I'm, I'm like it's all about fresh bread like it's not about me making it necessarily but i just i just love the taste of and like the, the feeling of it like even like a good turkish like pizza like that kind of long bread like i don't know just I, it sounds weird just me rambling on about bread but i just think it, i think it's i think it's the nicest thing when you're when you're really hungry if i just gave you a loaf of fresh bread you just munch it you, you just be eating it. You just be tucking it. So, I don't know that, that that for me is like a big deal. Like I just I, I I just love it. Like it's my favorite thing to have when um thingy. Another thing that we make, which is okay. Again, this is not healthy at all, but it's got bananas in it, I guess. But um, when we were growing up, in the masjid that was um, in the masjid that was uh like local to us, we it was run by like a Guyanese family, and they had this dish called gulgula, which is like bananas. It's actually kind of healthy, I guess. It's the bananas blended up and they put like dates or raisins in it sometimes and then they put just a bit of, bit of like egg and a little bit of flour and a bit of milk but it's not a lot the banana is the main ingredient that you want to taste um and then i don't know how the auntie used to do it i've tried so many times and i've asked her and she she just she just says that it's the way she did it and she like does this thing with her hand where like she'll oh wait again yeah she'll like squeeze like little circles out of her hand into the oil and it'll make perfect like banana little puff thingies but yeah that's that's one thing which i, I love as well I, I for me it's all about like the dishes that we had in our childhood and stuff like that you know just trying to bring them to the table and and, and i think stuff like that's so great um and to break fast with as well um yeah again it's not the healthiest thing ever but you know the main ingredient is banana so i guess it kind of is kind of okay i guess the, but yeah the, it's, it's, it's funny because the uh, it's something we talk about every every year but as you go on in ramadan you your body requires less and less food as your i suppose like what i've always said and heard is that your stomach shrinks but i guess i've never really like um 
uh, check to back that up scientifically, but I'm assuming that's that's correct, right? Like your stomach shrinks as you get used to uh, smaller portions or something. Am I right in saying that? I, I, I don't know about the long term thingy of it. I know that the, obviously the less the less you eat, like your stomach won't expand. It will, it will, it will you know. Um, but I'm not sure about the long term of it or across or across from Milan, so I can't I can't no, really I mean, comment on that. But you... does your stomach shrink? You can Google it. Good, yeah. I'm sure it does. I hope I'm not making that up. The reduction of food consumed throughout fasting causes your stomach to gradually shrink, meaning yeah. you need to eat less food to feel full. If you want to get into the habit of healthy eating, then Ramadan is a great uh, time to start. Oh, look, this article mm. actually what it says. This is good for us to reflect mm. on. It's seven surprising health benefits of Ramadan. It says, uh, one, it talks about the dates. Although well, three dates are eaten at the start of iftar um, th- for spiritual reasons, they also become uh, an added bonus for multiple health benefits. That's ama- it's, it's, it's always amazing when you see something told to us 1,400 years ago and then now mm. us realizing how beneficial it is. Like it says that... Um, it says that one of the most important aspects of fasting is eating the right amount of energy. And considering an average serving of dates is 31 grams of carbohydrates, this is one of the perfect foods to give you a boost. Dates are also a great mm-hmm. way of getting some much needed fiber, which will aid and improve digestion throughout Ramadan. Add, uh, added to, add to that, adding to that, their high level of potassium, magnesium, and B vitamins. And it equally, and it quickly becomes apparent that dates are one of the healthiest fruits out there. Wow. Um, and it says, number two, boosting it boosts your brain. No doubt you'll be aware of the positive. By, by the way, this is a um, this is just an article that I googled. Anyone who wants to find it, it's called Seven Surprising Health Benefits of Ramadan on RealBuzz.com. Uh, it says, the positive effects of fasting can have on your mental health and well-being uh, and spiritual focus uh, are evident in the sense that they boost brain power. Uh, a study carried out by scientists in USA found that mental focus achieved during Ramadan increases the level of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I'm now just saying words. But you know what's interesting is last week we had Dan Jumo on the podcast and he said that he actually performs better oh, yeah. in football when he's fasting, which kind of this back man. scientifically, yeah. Uh, it helps you ditch bad habits. Lower cholesterol, mm. which is a problem in many of us households. 100%. The, the whole host of uh, a team of cardiologists in UAE found that people observing Ramadan enjoyed uh, uh, when I'm reading Ram when I'm reading it in English I say Ramadan and when I'm like say, talking you, it, I like Ramadan <laughs> my accent always switches up bro it's a, it's a mess <laughs> uh, observing Ramadan uh, enjoy a positive effect on their lipid profile the lipid profile which mm. means a reduction of cholesterol in the blood low cholesterol increases cardiovascular health Greatly reducing the risk of suffering from heart disease, a heart attack, or a stroke. Lasting appetite reduction, detoxify by not drinking that a day, absorbing more nutrients. Let's talk about that de- 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 detoxifying because we are talking about cooking and stuff here. And and you spoke to me in the past about kind of like detoxing and 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 the benefits of fasting. I mean, when you were at my house once, um, mm. I- I'll read this out to you and and let me know your thoughts on kind of how we can use Ramadan to detox. It says. As well as being great for spiritually cleansing yourself, Ramadan acts as a fantastic detox for your body. By not eating or drinking throughout the day, your body will be offered the rare chance to detoxify your digestive system throughout the month. When your body starts eating into fat reserves to create energy, it will also burn away any harmful toxins that might be present in fat deposits. This body cleanse will leave a healthy blank slate behind and is a perfect stepping stone to consistently having a healthy lifestyle. That's just amazing, isn't it? Bro? Like the, the, the fact that it's actually recommended to us to, to fast Mondays and Thursdays. Imagine a person who actually utilizes that, has enough self-discipline to utilize that. They're essentially detoxing their body every single week. Whereas the layman Muslim um, who completely, you know, is fulfilling his obligation. So, so, so not, um, putting it down but the lay muslim who when we fast just ramadan we're only getting that once a year that detox imagine getting that once a week is amazing yeah the thing is detox, detox is a tricky word because like you know uh it's it's a lot more complex than just the food that we eat and things like that so a lot of food items will claim to quote unquote detox you um but 
and it sounds like such a magical word, but yeah, like I, I definitely, I definitely do agree. There's so many benefits of, of it. And I think one of the best, like antioxidant, like a lot of people, like when we talk about antioxidant foods and stuff like that, um, vitamins A, C and E, I believe that is, I want to fact check that. I don't want that to go out and, um, Um, I'm sure it is though. Yeah, yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, um, yeah. So they're, they're like the the antioxidant vitamins, quote unquote. Sorry, it's late. I might just get my letters wrong. But yeah, um, it's 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 really quite interesting. So when we talk about like, that's why like w w what I was saying before, like even when I have sahur, I'll have like the berries on top of my porridge because like while the porridge and you were talking about dates, for example, having like that slow release and like having being high in carbohydrates and stuff like that, like things like oats and dates are great for that kind of stuff and fiber. Um, and, it, and it, it's really good for our bowel movements as well. Um, the kind of like fasting and stuff like that, allowing uh, the eating the right thing at Sahur and letting that pass through your body. And like it, we, it will do wonders for your bowels and, 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 and your, and you know, your digestive system in general. Um, but yeah, like I said, like having loads of berries on top of my porridge is something that I find really important because like you're just packing in all those antioxidant vitamins. One thing that a lot of people don't, really get is that things like detoxifying foods and superfoods are all marketing terms there's many foods that are like among us broccoli broccoli is like in my opinion one of the best superfoods because like it's such an average it will cost like what less than a pound to get a, a head of broccoli but it has almost everything uh certain vegetables will have more calcium than than milk contains but because of again because of marketing and and fancy technology and terminology you'll always associate calcium with milk and yes, it does provide that, but we can actually get so much from uh, things like vegetables and, and fruit. And that's why I'm a really big kind of advocate of, of, like you said, the whole eating fresh thing. It's not because of like anything other than the fact that like eating fresh, even frozen, like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that, it does way more than like, you know, the typical like, um, uh, you know, diet pills and all these kind of crazy things will do. Like it's all here for us. Allah has put every aspect of our like health and well-being inside the food that already exists you know um but yeah i think like one of the interesting things as well is that vitamins for example um vitamins are really kind of like susceptible to damage and loss so that's why we always say that the fruit is better in different countries than it is here because when food is brought over here it's being uh you know hit by time uh, the weather light temperature all these things are sucking away the vitamins so an orange won't have as much vitamin c as you would have if you picked it from the tree in spain for example you know so a lot of these things need to be taken into consideration and so even things like using frozen frozen fruit might actually contain uh better kind of qualities than fresh fruit depending on the sourcing and stuff like that so there's really so many things to look into uh, and a lot of health. Is that, that why the careful. mangoes? Is that why the mangoes on South or Broadway always taste better than the ones in Sainsbury's <laughs> or on Allen Rock Road or wherever you're getting them from? Is Allen yeah, yeah, Rock with, Road? Is, is that a road in Birmingham? Gene. Sorry. Is Allen Rock Road a road in in Birmingham? I'm trying to relate to. Yeah, the... yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It is. Uh, Stratford Road is and Coventry Road and Ladypool Road are the main ones, but Allen Rock Road is 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 there as well. So Lady Pool Road, I'm sure they got some mm. good mangoes in season in uh, in the summer times, and they always seem to when they come fresh off the plane or the or the ship or whatever, they always taste uh, so amazing. But uh, let, oh, let me just chat back to something that you were saying. You, you we were talking mm. about detoxing, and then you said that um, a, a bit about how fasting um, benefits us, the gut, um, uh, how it's good for your bowels. Um, so are we essentially like? Um, wasting that when we spend all day fasting and then we have like I don't know like just milkshakes and chocolate and cake and 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 fried food in the evenings um you know we we work so hard throughout the day for 17 hours we're we're, we're fasting and therefore it's great for our our gut and our bowels but then are we like uh what's the word like um uh, what's the word like the yeah, I get I what you mean. It's kind, like, it's kind of like wasting all that progress. Yeah, are people probably screaming think, at the screen right now? I, I think, yeah, like, are we wasting? Are we are we wasting that progress um, by by then just stuffing our faces, or does it is it still effective? No, because to, to be honest, the thing is, like, 
no like one day's worth of fasting is never going to do anything to anyone uh one week's worth of anything isn't going to do anything it's all about that constant you know it's all about developing habits and stuff like that like it's it's about it's a constant thing that's why like i said like when people want to lose weight it's better not to just say i want to cut down my calories in half that's not going to help you because yeah your body's going to digest the fat it's also going to digest the protein and the and the you know the car it's going to digest the rest of your body tissue as well so you're just going to become a lot thinner all over rather than just losing the weight in the places you want to and if you want to actually manage your weight or eat healthy and stuff like that it's not about going crazy and just like you know kind of uh, expecting that uh, detox is going to like just get rid of everything from your body it's about a slow small change over a long period of time so like i said like if you're the kind of person that only eats four pieces of fruit a day eat five and make it over a long period of time rather than saying i'm going to eat 20 pieces of fruit in one day and it's going to be good for me no it's not uh, your body will need to have that constant and and consistent um approach so i think i think if anything ramadan in a similar way that it has that a similar effect that it has with our iman like Ramadan is a kind of a booster and like a wave that a little rehabilitation period where we can say, right, I want my diet to be a specific way. And here's how I can make it happen through Ramadan. And it's by making a small change and not expecting everything to happen over Ramadan. I would say it takes at least like three months for any real diet to kick in. You know, extreme diets are never the answer. Ramadan is a perfect training ground. Of course, your good deeds, but also to like get into a good system with your diet, um, and and you can carry that on after Ramadan. So if you have, um, if you're breaking your if you're breaking your fast with fruit and healthy things, and 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 you know eating really well, and you feel full, keep that going past Ramadan. You know, do you know what I mean? So that that's how we should see it. So I don't want anyone to feel like dismayed if they try and cut back on loads of their spring rolls and stuff like that and they feel like nothing's happened because well it, it won't your body needs time to adjust and stuff like that and that's the healthiest way that we can kind of get into a good shape you know do you exercise much in ramadan no i i i haven't i've lockdown has been the worst period of exercise for me but you actually usually in ramadan we used to uh close to iftar we used to always go out and play football and stuff and that was really good uh, i like that yeah. that kind of adrenaline just keeps you going you know I've seen that a lot of people exercise like just before iftar. Just before iftar, it's, like, it's good. You get a lot of pump of yeah. Mm. So look, let's no, talk about your book before ending, uh, uh, ending, ending the episode. Um, what uh, talk to us about it? So what, uh, uh, this is something that's coming out uh, in time for Ramadan, and yes, uh, what have you got included in this book? So it's it's interesting. So I am one of the co-authors. So this is separate to Slice. This is something that I wanted. I'll, I'll use Slice, of course, to promote it. But this is more of a use of thing. And uh, I did it. It's not I, the Halal Food Diary it. one, is it? Because I know you've featured in the Halal Food Diary. Yeah, I'm, fe uh, yeah, I'm featured in the Halal Food Diary one. That's, that's separate. I'm so also featured in that. Oh, really? I did, you not I, know? Oh, no did you not see my, my bread and butter puddings in there? Oh, I saw the bread and butter pudding. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't read all the names. But that's pretty cool, mashallah. That's sick. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, alhamdulillah, featured in the Halal Food Diary one. But um, this one is, uh, I've been working on it for a few months with uh, my close friend, uh, Saeed. And uh, what we kind of realized was, so, I mean, I'm Pakistani and I have some heritage that's Afghani as well. And he's half English and half Egyptian. We've been friends to, since childhood. And, and we realized that, you know what, like, we're both really into food. And, and he, we're both, we've both, both worked as chefs. Um, and we kind of realized that, you know, like, we've got a lot of good background and understanding when it comes to food. And there's not really a ramadan book that's written by chefs as such when we look at things there are some but when when we look at like things there's not like a huge buzz around ramadan cookbooks and that kind of thing so we wanted to make it bigger than just recipes so we've split things up into like you know suhoor and and um uh snacks and iftar and desserts and drinks and stuff like that but really it's about being authentic so featured be between each chapter and most of these are by um, women. We try to highlight minority arts and stuff like that. But it's like poetry, paintings, um, you know, uh, things that really tell stories. We want this book to tell a story of like the upbringing. And it's almost like you enter this book and you're kind of like experiencing Ramadan in a different country. We've got recipes from around the world. The poetry, when, you'll understand when you see it, inshallah, but the poetry and the art will really make you feel like, you know, you're somewhere else. And there was one picture from uh, an Instagram account that we, we, we follow. It's really good. Uh, and, and she went to um, Pakistan and has this really beautiful picture of chai being made, uh, like, a, like a mug of chai. And, you know, we really just want these, like, authentic experiences to show through the book. Um, 
So yeah, it's, 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 it's a really interesting one. I think all the recipes as well have been developed to the point of like no return. Like the, okay, I'll give you one recipe that I've got in the book is, uh, is Kanefa. The, I've tried to make it as close to the original Palestinian uh, Nablus um, Kanefa. And it's not just, I found it on a website and I replicated it for this book. I've made this Kanefa so many times and failed so many times and developed, developed, developed and tried like a million different cheese combinations and tried the pastry a million different ways and tried the syrup a different ways. Just so that every recipe that we give you in this book, we're telling you this will work. So it's like a almost, it's not like an auntie uncle wrote this book. It's like we properly developed this and made it into like, I won't call it a work of art. That sounds a bit pretentious, but we really have tried to make it like an art form kind of thing while also making it quite easy for home cooks to kind of recreate. So yeah, that's, that's the Ramadan book. What's the secret to a good kuna kunafa? Um, there's a quite, there's quite a few things. So you really have, I think the for me, the most important thing is the cheese blend. Uh, so in Nablus, ask, is it the cheese? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's very tricky because in Nablus, I believe they use a kind of goat's cheese curd. Like it's something that, oh no, they use, um, it's called a, it's like a specific Nablusi cheese and it's like, you can get it in the UK where you have to like, it's brined and you have to rinse it and like, you know, kind of take a few days to get it. And even then, like it's, it's a tricky cheese blend to kind of get. Uh, and even the pastry, they made the pastry from scratch. So we, you know, we found that the best way is to take a uh, Katafi pastry, which you can find in many like Asian and Arab shops frozen. And we blend it up and we mix it with the right ghee and it's the right blend of mozzarella and ricotta. And it's the right type of ricotta. It sounds complicated. Oh, sounds it's actually complicated, really simple. Bro. No, no, it sounds complicated, but it's actually one of the easiest desserts. Uh, and it's all about just, for me, f making a good kanaf, I know it sounds weird, but it's about having the right shops. If you have the right shops around you, you can make it. Because like, the issue is if people try and use just mozzarella inside it or just halloumi, for example, it won't have the right texture. So you just need to cool. mix the right cheese together. And, and that's it. It's a, it's a very cheap, easy recipe to make it's just tricky because people don't use the right ingredients that's that's all i'll say that's the only difficulty in it so long as you find the right ingredients you're sorted and we've tried to detail that as much as possible i want to have a go at uh at your uh corner of i might have a go at it, but it just sounds a bit complicated but no no, uh, no. It, gonna... again try it try it well inshallah when you see the recipe like try it the recipe is is alhamdulillah i think it's, it's it's flawless and very simple again it's just about finding the right ingredients so if you're in london or birmingham or Manchester, I know for a fact that you've got the shops that sell it, but I don't know for everywhere else, but I'm sure like it's anything can be ordered and stuff like that. But yeah, like it's, you know, things like this, which we don't want to make it too overly simplified where it takes away from the authenticity of the actual dish, um, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. But yeah, I, I think enough is one of my go to quick recipes. It takes me about half an hour, 20, 45 minutes to make the whole really? thing. So it's very quick. I would imagine yeah, it would take hours. No, no, no. It's quick. It's quick. It's quick. Gosh. The last time I had a good kanafa, I can't remember, maybe when I was in Turkey. Um, mm. uh, Yusuf, let's, uh, before we end the episode, uh, mm. I want to ask you some questions from the Ramadan Ooh. game. Can I just say, when I first came on here for the podcast, you had me as the first person to answer the questions. That, that, that the, came out the, wrong. The, the you know what I mean? When the, when, when, the the first, when the first game came out, you said, we're releasing this game. No one's seen it before. Um, and then you showed it to me on camera and you said, no way. Uh, I'm going to ask some questions. So yeah, it's like the, the, the we've come full circle. Wow. Alhamdulillah, how that's successful amazing. it's become. Like, you've got our second edition. Jazakallah khair, man. That's amazing. I didn't know that. Right. I'm going to pick them at random. Boom. Here we go. What have you outgrown since last Ramadan? Mm. <laughs> my clothes <laughs> no, i'm joking um uh it's an interesting one you know um i think i've outgrown a lot of like a lot of like uh, i think you outgrow mindsets a lot and i think since last ramadan especially going through the whole lockdown and stuff like that like i've, out I've outgrown a lot of like a lot of things that I would have cared about, I just don't care about as much anymore. Uh, petty things, you know, like when you, when you, you know, we often get caught up in our day to day kind of uh, tasks and organizations and stuff like that that we're in and, and the work that we do day in, day out and stuff like that. And you get bothered by little things. But I feel like, you know, when you put in perspective how much this past year has battered us all uh, with lockdown and stuff like that, I think I've outgrown a lot of like the kind of 
I wouldn't call it petty. I won't say I'm a petty person, but like worrying about things that aren't significant, you kind of just realize that, like, look, you've got to be more focused and we got to realize that like there's so much more going on and that kind of thing. So I definitely feel like I've, I've grown, maybe that's just maturity as I've, I've, I've grown up a year, I guess. But no, I, I think, think, it's you're, I think you're right. I think a lot of people have, um, uh, uh, have made mindset uh, changes and grown mm -hmm. in their mindset uh, over the past year. So I think that's like a very viable answer. Uh, my next question is going to be uh, I'm going to pick it because I want it to be food related seeing as we're on with you uh, now I do have one food related question and the question is what is your ideal sahur but I know that that's uh, you know that. porridge <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> so I'm going to try and ask you another food related one um, considering it's Ramadan we don't have too many food related ones to be honest um, I like that one actually let's just see Okay, why don't you answer this one while I find another one? But the question is, describe your ideal Eid morning. But I'm going to adapt it a bit and ask you, uh, we spoke about the Ramadan food, uh, but we know that Eid is a day of eating and drinking. It's a day of celebration. It's a day to eat mm. sweet stuff. So diet's out of the window. What are you making for the Eid morning? Tell us. Uh, we have we have one of two things. One will be, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, Samia. Is it Sevia yeah, or yeah. Semia? Is it a B or an M? I never know. Um, yeah, but yeah, so, we have, so we have in Sevia. my house, where we say Sevia, in Urdu yeah, they Sevia, say Sevia, and in, I think I think perhaps Bengalis call it Semia. That's weird because I'm not Bengali at all, and we call it. I've called it Semia. Maybe I just heard the Bengali person say it when I was younger, and I said it. Anyway, we we have that a lot, um, which is I think it's just really nice and simple. If I've got time, I'll make. I won't make halwa puri chana. So for anyone that doesn't know, halwa puri chana is three things. Halwa is the semolina um cooked with like a sweet syrup into like a pudding. I have a really funny story um, about this actually after okay puri puri is like a deep fried uh flatbread and chana is chickpeas like a chickpea curry um i hate puri i really really hate it like i, I love everything about really? pakistani cu cu cuisine um but i hate puri i just think it's so greasy and awful so i i'll just make paranta so we have halwa paranta chana um for, for for breakfast uh, and we'll do like a nice big pot of desi chai as well so like yeah it will, it will have to be pakistani there's nothing else it can be what uh, what's your we'll, what's your story let's hear it we'll end it yeah it really made me laugh yourself, buddy. i just remembered it um mm. thanks for answering those uh that was two questions um that we got through um and uh if you, hey, you are interested in buying the ramadan game we have a limited uh stock uh and you can grab it at shop.freshlyguided.com uh, mm. Okay, my story for halwa puri is this. So I um, I had halwa puri once, right? Like the morning after my wedding, uh, my mm. uh, I uh, I had halwa puri, and I don't think I'd had it before. Surprisingly, even though I'm Pakistani, and so I really enjoyed it. And I remember a couple of years later, um, for some reason I was really craving it, and I went to this place that sell it, and um, and uh, they gave me the. <laughs> they gave so they gave me the so I went to order because I was like craving it and I said can I have some halwa puri and they made it for me and they gave me the chane and they gave me the halwa and then I said to them oh um, can I get the brata and they were like what and I said can I get the brata as well um, and then they were like the brata you didn't order brata and I was like yeah I wanted um, halwa puri and uh and I didn't get the <laughs> And I thought, I thought halwa puri was one word. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, and I thought that they served it with a brata. And even though it's not uh, funny now, I'm really back at it. When I told my in-laws, they were laughing so much because obviously it's like a, it's like a standard, isn't it? In like Asian yeah, houses. Yeah. But I, I didn't know. As I didn't know that pu was it puri. Puri, yeah, puri. I didn't know that puri was was the bread. I thought that was a brata. Yeah. So I, I it's really, I, it's so yeah. annoying when something's so funny in your head and then you tell the story and it's just anticlimactic. I feel like that just happened. <laughs> I thought it was going to be some story about how like, you know, you dropped it on your lap or something like that. Or, yeah. It was the yeah. morning after you got married dumb, and I was eating it thing. and I dropped it on my in-laws. I don't know, something like... <laughs> yeah. No, that's... The worst I, at telling it's, stories. It's, like, I hype the story up and then I tell it and I'm like, that's it. No, no, but to be fair, like, I feel like a lot of people, especially those where Urdu is in their first language or like they don't speak it, like, will definitely get stuff like that. Like, I, 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 def I can't remember what is with me, but like, 
there's, there's def- there definitely have been some things. Where like, oh, I remember, for example, like the first time I had, oh, what's it called? People call it go- uh, golgape or pani puri, yeah. you know, the, the shells and you kind of crack them. And anyway, um, I was at my dad's uh, family's house, my, my aunties on my dad's side. I was at their house for Eid one day and um, I was really young. And, we, you know, we had the shirt on. We had to look really smart and like be proper and stuff like that in front of your family. And, you know, uh, they fed me the pani puri and they put tamarind juice in it and i hate tamarind juice which i learned that day because oh, no. i ate it and it went in and it just poof, it sprayed out and and yeah i definitely got in trouble for that because you know how can you spit food out in front of your family but yeah what can i say yeah i was just a food critic since i was 10 years old so you know there's that um but yeah alhamdulillah. i i uh i i remember now that's i had a similar thing because you said it was because like you know some people who aren't as familiar with the, with the language and stuff and i remember the reason i thought halwa puri was one word uh, is because um i think what i did is i ordered halwa puri and then i i ordered paratha as well that's what happened so uh. i ended up leaving yeah so i cuz i cuz halwa puri is um cuz cuz there's halwa which is the the, the the what do you call halwa the sem- semolina uh, it's it's the semolina yeah. it's it, the full word, the full one is suji halwa yeah yeah so it's like it's it's a it's a semolina pudding yeah so there's halwa in it and then there's chani in it right and yeah. then there's the puri and it's called halwa puri so if it was the way, the way it's said, yeah, said yeah 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 it should be called halwa puri chani. So I thought when I said halwa puri that halwa was a halwa and puri was another word for chani, right? So I'm like, <laughs> that's the halwa puri. And uh, so I ordered halwa puri and prata. And so I think what happened is I got halwa mm. puri and then I got prata as well. And I'm looking at the bag and I'm thinking like, why have I got <laughs> like a separate thing? And, so separate, and I think I actually went yeah, back yeah, yeah. with that. And then I ended up having halwa puri. And then I also had like prata on the side, which was like a really weird thing to order apparently. So. You, sh- you should make this story of you telling this story about Hello Puri into a clip for Instagram. Just that. And people are watching it to the end like, wait, I don't get it. <laughs> Why did he tell the story twice? Why did he tell the story? <laughs> it's, just, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. He didn't learn his lesson for the first He told the story first time. Like, completely <laughs> was a miss. And so he reworded it. I'm going for it again. There's consistency and determination in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. You should, you, should, you should make that like a motif for Freshly Grounded. Like, you know, you'll be on episode 300, inshallah, one day. And just... <laughs> I'll turn it into a little sound clip. We've got a couple sound clips here we've got that we never use. It's, it's an off, mate. It's an <laughs> off, mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you did that. I remember mentioning that once. We should do sound clips. That's great. Yeah, but I mean, we didn't even like... Um, uh, do more because there's so many people like suggested sound clips I want to go back to but maybe you only got that one and this one yeah a bit of a lad <laughs> that's, <what I'm> <laughs> that's very good, that's uh, very good. Yusuf, thank you so much for your time bro as always uh, I can't wait to have you back uh, and us being able to do yeah, well. made halal again hopefully even better and stronger um, and it looks like perhaps um post ramadan we can get started on shooting again inshallah so uh yeah guys inshallah uh after ramadan uh we'll have some great made halal content and um if you have any suggestions as to what you'd want to see on made halal then please do comment below uh, in this video uh, other than that yusuf uh can't wait to see you again bro and uh where can people find your book uh yeah Are you gonna good give one. some so links it- to put in the description yeah, so um, it's not being published yet, but it will be, inshallah, on uh, in Kindle format, PDF, and ebook. So anyone, regardless of whatever device you've got, you'll be able to access it, inshallah. We're trying to make it as affordable as possible for everyone. And I'll leave like a mailing list link so that you can get an email when it's out. We won't spam sure. you, don't worry. Just send you one email when it's out, inshallah, and, and with, with the two links. And yeah, can't wait, inshallah. Really excited for it. Thank you so much for giving us your evening, man, and uh, enjoy the rest of your rest of your evening with your family, inshallah. You too, inshallah. I'm always going to think of you when I eat Hello Puri Chana. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes right. you happy with the prata as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Hello Prata Puri Chana. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.